crowd is back to roar its defiance at the detractors and to try to lift the club, which certainly has a cup final in the offing, but a league title fast disappearing over the horizon. Well, Celtic dominate eight out of the starting 11 who played against Rangers, with Tommy Boyd recovered from his head knock, Ayo Berkovic replacing Moravchik, and Mark Butchel on from the start. And coming in for his full debut, Brazil international Rafael, who after the removal of his appendix must be anxious to show he's now 100%. Sir Johnson have conceded only one goal in the last four games, and this side contains 10 of the men who successfully held out at Ibrox last week. That is the starting 11. Nathan Lowndes, despite being top goal scorer, is still on the bench. John Paul McBride returns to Celtic Park where he started his trade, and Pat Connolly continues his run. And in goal, 22-year-old Stephen Robertson, who came on just before halftime last week at Ibrox and produced heroics, and therefore is entitled to another run. And the referee today, John Robotham. Well, the pitch has made a marvellous recovery from Wednesday night, but it took a real hammer. And I think every Celtic supporter of that game would say the Rangers' defence was a real hammering as well, but they held out, they won the game, and that's what it's all about, and Celtic have to pick themselves up from that. And the determined words of Kenny Dalglish, I think, summarise exactly what they were going to do, and that is fight to the death. He repeats that in the match programme today, so there will be no lack of enthusiasm, but one wonders at this stage, early on in the game, just how much a toll was taken physically on the legs of the Celtic players, given the heaviness of the pitch and the demands of that particular game. Back to Boyd. Well, that's a bad ball played out there. There's Kane, who played wide. To Johnson at the moment, knitting together very well indeed. Right behind it, Raphael. Played inside, just touched away by Raphael in a very good position there. Now, plenty of space for Berkovic. Bocchel's making a run. Well, that's a lovely little ball through the middle. Superb pass there. Like threading the needle. And in came the big Australian. He wasn't all that far away. Bekovic again. There's the run. He got away from his marker, but took it very well. That's a tempting ball. It must be. Yes. Bocho totally uncovered at the far post. It's not that it made it any easier for him. He had thousands of eyes on him as he took this. He must have been very conscious that he had a clear-cut chance and only one opportunity to make contact and put it away. And Sandy Clark must be wondering where his defence disappeared to. Well, the side had been very well organised up to that goal, but an astonishing lapse of judgment by the defence on the right-hand side there and punished duly and rightly punished by Butcher. Boy, kept himself very handy in that vacant space there. Viduka. The back heel it, yes, Berkovic. Berkovic brought down there. Quickly taken, he wanted back again, and the goalkeeper did very well, that was really struck very hard indeed. Dragging the ball away, getting a little bit of freedom and space for himself, and then letting fly. He hugged it gratefully. Now V course, free kick. Taken very quickly, Berkovic seems to take his arm, but he wants to let fly and go, and the goalkeeper, I thought at first, looked as if he might slip. Well, he's looking very sharp and fresh, uh, Berkovic. Any opportunity, he's going for it like that. Bullet. There's a bit of run around the outside. 
Neat little turn, and there's nobody there for St. Johnson and certainly Mahe for Celtic. And that is the first, as I said, with only 15 minutes to go, this is the first real menace in this Celtic penalty area since the start of the game. Did very well to wriggle his way around there. Good move by McBride. Another swerb way out. Nice ball by Petrov. Berkovic going at pace. Virgil wanting the ball played in. And the goalkeeper read it very well. I think the pass delayed just a little bit too long. Well, Kenny Douglas out there must be glad his players have responded. They had a really demanding game on Wednesday. And they have worked away hard in this game as well. No, no sign of uh, any tiredness so far. On the outside. There's a Halloran trying to get it in, and there is a little touch in. It's in. So Johnson have equalized and utter hesitation. And I think there's going to be the referee called upon Mahi there. I thought he was going to the linesman. But Conley got in. Hesitation in the defense. They were straight from one side to the other. And Gould, well, it looks to me as if he made his launch of that ball just a little bit uh, late. So, against the run of the play, St. Johnson have pulled them back. I think Sandy Clark will be in a better frame of mind now. Back to level. And uh, Celtic not looking happy at the moment. Petrov, that's better play now, Berkovic. That neat play of Berkovic. There's a run by Viduka. There's no outside. Can he put it away? No. Well, they were screaming at the linesman, the St. Johnson defense. The pass was perfection by McNamara. I think Viduka might at first have had a look across to the linesman, took it by the outside of the foot there. As you probably saw, imparted just a little bit uh, too much swerve on the ball. Positive clearance that time by Griffin. Given away by O'Halloran. And the halftime whistle goes well. I think uh, summarizing the first half, you simply put two young strikers into the frame. First of all, Mark Virgil. You could say very slippers. Raffaele has been uh, taken off. And in his place, Olivier Tebeli. And uh, for St. Johnson, they brought on Kieran McInespy for Jim Weir. Berkovic. Good positioning by Tebeli. Well supported. McNamara. Berkovic almost on top of that. Lovely little slip by Viduka again. Berkovic. Is Viduka with it? Can't get a hold of it now. Well, a big Australian international. So much of the subtlety of his play deceives defenders. I think the very bulk of the man rather confuses them because he's so delicate with his touch to counterbalance that. And it's a free kick. Berkovic to take it. Watch players running into the middle. There's the goalkeeper. It's in. There's Viduka. It was so simple. The goalkeeper, I think, just a little bit late to commit himself. And this is his 26th goal of the season. A delightful ball placed to his head. And in that lack of commitment by the St. Johnson defence, out jumped and out maneuvered. They go 2 1 down. There goes Berkovic. Now 
Now Boyd. Berkovic inside. And away goes Bolin. Nice little ball played out by Bolin. Now here's O'Neill. Bad ball by O'Neill. Easily met there by Tommy Boyd. Oh, look at the hesitation here. Viduka will lay it off. Berkovic to Viduka. Yes. Glorious goal. And that means that Mark Viduka has now scored more goals individually than the St. Johnson side put together. His second goal there, wonderful build up. But look at the work he put in to hold on to the ball in the first place. And then with great assuredness, putting it away. Here's Mahe. That's a dangerous, dangerous tackle there. Won Mahe reached out there in the yellow card and he lifted a hand and I think when you lift a hand nowadays some referees regard it as a high jump but that was a bad tackle uh, he should not have reacted and Mahe is uh, being taken off now a man with an obvious explosive temperament has been read very quickly by the Celtic management as Reggie Blinker now comes on and a 3-1 Celtic not entirely uh, sure of, of adding to the tally but I think comfortable enough now but here's Viduka there's Bocho he's done it and they have added to the tally 4-1 And that uh, St. Johnson defense penetrating now, looking so fragile. Difficult angle for Virgil. But he slots it home with great confidence. Well, he doesn't know what's happened to his team. They were playing with a great deal of composure and measured play at the start of the second half. And suddenly the, the bottom has fallen out of the side. Virgil. Try to get it back to Blinker. Well, there's a run forward by O'Neill. Did well to try the shot, and Gould had to go for it. I think, in fact, the ball may have been going past. But when you're a goalkeeper in this situation, you've got to make absolutely sure. O'Neill suddenly popping up. I think surprising the Celtic defence he was there in the first place. Once again, trying to find Lowndes. He looked impressive. Yet again, coming off the bench. On to Lowndes, good run there by Lowndes, holding up the ball well. Kane, McInesby. Ooh, didn't get his shot in. Well, when you go 4-1 down and then you start to attack like this, as they have, it's either a case of certainly being a little bit more relaxed uh, on the ball or St. Johnson leaving it too late. Lyons, a brilliant turn by Lyons, superb play. He's going out in his own, he'll try and score in his own, he could have squared it down. Superb little turn, but he ruined it, just a little bit selfish. John O'Neill was screaming for the ball inside. Well, they don't look all that uh, animated, at least Kenny doesn't at the moment, but inwardly he must be satisfied he's got this game out of the way after what happened, and out of the way so handsomely after what happened on Wednesday night. Almost got the turn again. I'll say Lowndes has been very impressive coming off the bench. A lot of skill, a lot of running. And there goes the final whistle, and yet again it's been Mark Viduka's day. The sponsors agree with my assessment. Clearly the man of the match. The first goal certainly came from Mark Virtual in an open position and the youngster under pressure did put it away cleanly.
Then came that hesitation, I think, by Jonathan Gould for Connolly to equalise. And when Celtic were just beginning to look as if they were look, getting into a, a trough, up came Baduka with the neatest of touches with a head to put them in front again. And then a glorious smash into the back of the net after some lovely, neat build-up. And right at the end, Bocho coming in and again with a great deal of certainty, almost as if he had learned a little lesson in how to finish from Baduka, made it for comprehensive victory event. Um.